go. How are you doing, Brian King, UK Flowing TV? Uh, today we're at the Fitter Training Centre over in Loughborough. Uh, we're joined by current carpet fitter of the year, Dan Jones. Dan, how are you doing? I'm fine, thanks, yes. Cheers. Uh, Dan, uh, the uh, tool giveaway with the last, the last thing we did was yeah. the cutters and tuckers. Seems a long so, time ago. Yeah. And it, well, it was. Uh, RWS uh, donated the Roberts uh, tucker, so we're going to give it away instead of keeping it for ourselves. Yeah. Um, we've uh, put all the names of the new subscribers and people who's liked the page into a hat, and we've picked Mark Carpet Williams. So, Mark, well done, you've won that. Congratulations, uh, Mark from Carmarthen. So, if you get in touch, Mark, uh, give us your address, and that will get it sent out to you. Uh, Dan, this week, um, bit of a funny, bit of a funny one, really. Stretchers, especially on some of the forums, especially when you start pulling the power stretchers out. Some yeah, people yeah. jump on you, say, "No, I've been doing it hundred years. I've never used one. I'm, I never will." Um, but I don't know. We'll see how this one goes. Uh, we've got about what eighty years worth of. Generations of carpet stretchers and kickers here. Uh, starting off with that's before any knee kickers come out. Yeah, we've got this old thing, so we call it the stick. How old do you reckon that is? I don't know, someone out there will know. I'd say, I'd, 40s or 50s, I'd say, maybe before that. Before they had gripper, when they was on ring and pin, or they was turning and tacking into the skirting. What would they use that for, just like pushing yeah. it onto the, the rings? Yeah, I think they, they use the carpet to lever off it uh, and, and then they push it with the top of their leg. If anyone out there does know exactly how they used it, I'm sure they'll yeah, tell us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know so you, I mean, you wouldn't have sore knees with that no. because um, I think you use, you, well, you'd have a bruise on your thigh because you push it with your thigh. Don't you? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it does work. Uh, I, when I picked it up and tried it the other day, I didn't think it was going to do anything, but you can actually see that it, it, it does. It does move. It does pull some tension. Yeah, yeah. And I, I assume that they brought out whatever tension was in the carpet up to, up to the top to give them the maximum stretch. But as I say, I've seen carpets that have been fitted 30, 40 years, uh, and they must have used something like this, and and, and they look perfectly good uh, nowadays. So uh, they moved on from that then. So what's the first knee kicker what come out? So we've got that. No cotton heads. No cotton heads, just spikes. Um, but still, we'll, we'll, we'll have a go with this. It's, it's not got adjustable, no. Real leather pad, no adjustment. Is that right? What's the pad like on it, Dan? Yeah, the pad feels good. And I, I, I quite like a hard stretcher pad. You do actually think when you get a stretcher and the pads are, it's going to be awful, but I, I quite like them. I think it gives you a more positive stretch. Can you adjust the pins? You can, yeah, you can, you can adjust the pins. So I, I would set the pins up on this, just, just so you can feel them coming through the back. It actually turns the opposite way to any other one. So I'd just set it up so you can feel the pin, and, and that's that. But it's vintage, a bit of old stuff. Interesting to some people, boring to others. <laughs> Moving on to some modern day knee kickers. Yes, yeah, so we've, we've just got a, a Roberts kicker here. Um, it's got the lock at the back. So I mean, that stretch has just took us a few mil. Um, so we've had about five mil out of, out of that, and then we've had another five mil out of that. So, so we're up the wall here. Um, we'll give it a go with this. This is just a stretcher everyone uses every day of the week. Obviously, if you want to try and get some more tension, you can come down your carpet and work up your step. Pretty easy with a carpet like this to end up with wavy lines everywhere because you've distorted it, not stretched it as much in one place as another. But, yeah. And then we've got the, uh, that. the new pal, pal driver by Jansa. Yeah, we've got Brian's prized prize new stretch here that he hasn't even. Not used even until I've had a go with it. Don't break it down. No. I've already knocked a chunk out of it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the uh, adjustment like on it? Um, which of the, the, the adjustment of the, the pad, it's on these uh, thickers exactly like you've got on your power stretcher. Um, 
sturdy way of fixing it. Not a lot to go wrong. If it did go wrong, you just put a nut and bolt through and you'd be on the road again, wouldn't you? Yeah, what I have noticed, it's quite tall. Does that uh, yeah, go over the will, power stretcher? It will go over the, the power stretcher pole. It will go over the head of the power stretcher. You can actually get a grip on it without squashing your fingers. Um, the main thing you'd say with this, we've got four nap grips and we've got five rows of, uh, of stretching pins. It's really nice on the adjustment there. It is it's very nice. wide, isn't it, the head? Yeah. It's got a good wide head. I've not really used a wide headed stretcher before. I always imagined you'd have to kick them a lot harder, but I've had a go with this. What do you think the benefits of having a wide head are? I think you've got less chance of slipping. Yeah. Um, your nap grips are, are holding. You've got another row of pins that are, are holding. You've got less chance of, of slipping. It has got a bit of weight in it, so it does it does go down nice. I mean, obviously, all of your weights on it when you when you're stretching, but it, it, and you're also stretching an extra 20 mil extra. So I suppose you need less less goes with it across the width of the carpet or the length. We'll give it a go down. Feel like. Yeah, it's oh, nice. Yeah. Really nice. Is it, is it a sort of two-viewed bag? Then? If I wasn't so tight, I'd buy one. I think it but was 120 odd quid yeah. up there. I, I have to have something break before I replace it, so uh, I'm a bit tight on the tool front. But if, if I had if I had the money to just keep buying them, I'd definitely buy one of these. It's, I, it indexes well on the pin, the pin lengths. Yeah. Uh, OWS are offering a discount on that tool. Uh, just put the cord in Dan's tool and uh, you'll get a discount on that from OWS, Carpet Fitters Shop Online. Yeah, all in all though, I'd say it's a, it's a, nice, a nice bit of tack that is. Right, moving on to uh, the power stretchers. Um, We've got my crane power stretcher, me and my own personal one, I've had many years. You've got your own personal Roberts one. Yeah. And then we've got this old... Let's have a look at this one first. Yeah, we've got one this, of the this first is, power stretchers out. This is another of the antiques we've brought. So they don't tend to have nap grips on it. I have seen some power stretchers with nap grips. Uh, or you can have the cotton heads over there. Which you'd use that on a, some sort of a velvet so you didn't pull tufts, knock tufts out with the big pins. Yeah. Um, so that, that's interchangeable, just unscrew that knob there. Interesting, the, it's got the wooden head and the wooden tail block. Yeah, it's ecological this is. <laughs> just but, give, give it a pump down, does it still work? Yeah, nothing wrong with that. No, no. Is there any no. lock on it, like the modern ones? There's probably a lock on it at full. Yeah, so, so basically, if you want to lock one of these, or anything that hasn't got a lock, unless the handle's fully down, I would say that you need to bring the head out a bit and, and then give it some stretch, and it'll sit there quite comfortably locked. You could do with a bit of oil. It's not the best thing to do. I don't think it's useful, to be honest. Um, yeah, so that, that again is, we've got all the, the old stuff here, it's a bit of interest, not much good for anything nowadays. The power stretcher would work perfectly well. Right, well, let's, uh, let's move on to the uh, crane power stretcher. Uh, that's uh, a junior, I bought it from a fitter what was re retiring, probably 20 years ago for 50 quid, still going strong. Um, I, I use that most days. That's that's another thing as well. What you know, you know what I mean? I, I yeah, you I, use this quite I a lot. I use it don't a you? lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd say in uh, five days of fitting, I'd probably use it three or four days. But that's because most stuff I fit, I supply, so I can afford to take my time on it. Yeah, afford yeah. to spend all day on a loan job, stirs and landed. It's like any other tools. If you get used to using it all the time, you you get faster with it. It doesn't it doesn't take forever to use. When you first get it, it takes a bit of slotting together, and then you need to work out things like. If you, if you just want to get it out, you can use your power lock tube if I wasn't on the full extension there. But um, once you get used to them, 
straight? You can use them quite simply. I, I bet you just come in slotted together and don't even know you, you're using it, do you? Yeah, it takes minutes. I've had, I've had fitters saying, oh, I'm interested in buying a power stretcher. Can I come out with you, see how it works, how fast it is to set up? And yeah. they're surprised how easy and quick it is to set up. Yeah, once it's on the floor and it's there, it's, it's just a case of uh, moving it around with you. Yeah. If you've got someone working with you, you can get them up the back to bring the tailstock round whenever you need it. Or, or, otherwise, I wouldn't drag it around, I'd just go up and place that where you needed it rather than trying to roll it round from this end. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh. Um, this is yeah. probably one of the most important things I'd say that you, you could use with the power stretcher. Yeah, there's, there's, there's well, stretching block, I call it. Yeah. That's, I have three, I've got uh, that one, I've got one of a six or seven foot wide, and then I've got one of a no, ten no. foot wide yeah, yeah. for, the, for the arches. Yeah, the yeah that's I just wrap it in carpet. So you wrap it in carpet, I mean, skirtings nowadays, some of them aren't fixed that well, uh, or they're just stuck on with sealer. I have found using this, I, I've never broke a skirting yet, but whenever I say something like that, it always happens the day after. <laughs> but but um, this is an essential thing. You get it up the back end, you can bridge the doorway with it. Uh, if you've got a big archway halfway up the room, your poles aren't long enough, you can bridge the archway with it and you can stretch off. off off the archway uh, using it, it, it also spreads the, the it's, weight it spreads the, the load top. so it doesn't uh, break your skirting and it doesn't it's not pushing all at the bottom to bring the top off you, and if you've got a low radiator you can put it in sideways underneath um, so that I'd say is essential as soon as you get your, your your stretcher you really need to make yourself two or three of these in different lengths um, moving on to your power stretcher, that's the uh, the Roberts um, swivel head. Man's got a fixed head. Uh, yours has a swivel head, so you can you can stretch on yeah, angles yeah. to you, the you, you can bring. Yeah. So if you're moving across the room, you you can twist the head to give you a straight stretch on it. Um, but you still are getting a, a touch of sideways uh, stretch, which you don't really want when you're doing uh, a woven carpet. It's got a uh, grid style stretch pattern to it. I've noticed you, you've got the aluminium tubes, I've got the steel tubes. Uh, but personally, I prefer the aluminium, uh, the steel tubes. Yeah, can you see them yeah, tubes yeah. there, can you? What we'll do is I'll put a bit of an angle on it. Should give us a bit better of a bow. Um, and you, you can see with the aluminium tubes, did you, did they're, they're, you, they're kicking out to the side there. Um, I, it's okay if there's a pull back to here. Yeah. Um, one can hold the tubes. Or, or, or you, if, if you're on your own, you might be able to do something with your stretcher. Um, put your stretcher in, on, onto it. Or, or, there is actually, I've seen a special attachment that's got like some pins that goes halfway down that stops it. But to tell you the truth, I'm, as long as it's stretching. I'm not that bothered, about, doing the not job. That bothered about the bow. The benefits of the aluminium tubes are they're lighter to carry. Yeah. Your, your box is lighter to carry. I'd say if you're doing a shorter room, what would have been better to stop the bow is to use three tubes here so they're not extended, so you've got the inner inside the tube. You, you've got less bow. Um, when you get to the one like this crane that we've got, um, they've got the steel poles, we'll give this a good, uh, a good pull. He says. Got it sorted. <laughs> right then. So always keep the head well down because you want them spikes. You've got a lot of stretch on. You don't want it to slip. So you can see there we've got bags more stretch on that. And we've not got a bend at all in the tubes there, have we? No, perfectly straight. Do you follow a stretching pattern when you're using a power stretcher? Um, Personally, I, I'm not as anal with the power stretcher. Stretching pattern I'd use is just the length before width. Yeah. Um, and, and, and like you say, it, it isn't that critical unless you've got a pattern. Um, if you're using a plain carpet, you can pull bits out of it here, there. That if it was a, a pattern carpet, you'd, you'd see exactly where you, 
a trail of destruction where you pulled it in, in different directions. That's a, I think that's another benefit with a power stretcher when you yeah, stretch a pattern carpet. You can you can get the patterns. Yeah, you, you can pull the pattern. You can lock it off. You can fiddle around with your your, your other stretcher on your, on your initial stretch. Why can't I use this? There you go. <laughs> on your initial stretch, you're going to get the most stretch. Your first stretch, you're going to get your most stretch out of the carpet, which is going to cause it to turn. So you can, um, you can bring your carpet round um, using your normal stretcher. So a, a combination of the two you need. You, don't, you can't really just come in with your power stretcher. You need you need you need kicker as well just to shuffle it round. Um, again, with the the pins on these, we've actually got uh, well, this is an aluminium space on this one. They normally come with a bar between there. Oh, this one adjusts, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, man adjusts. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, so so Brian's actually adjusts in or out. So with this plate on, um, it, it basically. You can withdraw the pins. They normally just have a bar on, on one like this. I've got a plate on mine as well, but they normally have a bar on. You can adjust that so your pins aren't sticking. Yeah, that, that one's no plate on over there. So we've got a box standard on here. That's, that's the plate. If you adjust that so your teeth go through the carpet, I'd always stick my teeth on a power stretcher a little bit more quick than I would with a normal stretcher. Um, one thing is, as soon as you start pushing the handle, the back spikes do tend to go in further than the front. Um, the, the plates we've got there tend to stop that happening. That's just, they're just some homemade things, you can't buy them commercially. Um, if you wanted to make one yourself, just a few layers of vinyl pushed on the pins and cut round the head would, would be suitable. But I, I, I mean, there's no problem with the bar. They, they come ready to use. Dan, just going back to those plates, you made those plates, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> can, can you tell us the purpose of those plates and why you did it? Basically, <coughs> when you're using the bar only, I find that when you stretch on it, the back of the stretcher tends to dig in more than the front. Um, so your pins are going right through your underlay, the front pins aren't in as far. <coughs> The, the plate just tends to keep the head a bit straighter. There's one fat plate on it and there's two thinner plates so you can stack the plates up to, depending on what uh, height you want the pins to go through. Um, this crane you've got here, it hasn't got the swivel head. The 520 has a swivel head and the, one, the last one I used had a, uh, a button on the same as the Roberts. They do have that, they, this has got this. This is basically, you, you kick that to release the kicker, can't you? Yeah, that's got the lever on the side where you've got the... The, the button the on there, lock yeah. on the top, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, those, those plates, can, can you buy those? Can you actually buy them? Uh, you can't buy them at the moment. I, I did make a big batch and Steve Russell sold them all. Well, there, there is talk of um, me doing some more, but um, I've, I've been a bit busy and to be locked in the shed. It's been a bit hot. <laughs> but, but I personally think it's brilliant. It's yeah, brilliant yeah. Idea. There's a few, fair few sets of them out people have got on their stretches. I've not heard anyone moan about them anyway. And you, you first hear about complaints, you don't hear about the good things, so no, no words normally good. <laughs> Yeah. Moving on to the, uh, the well, the, the spark, that's more of an American tool. Uh, that's yours, isn't it? The, the spark there. This is, yeah, yeah. What's the idea of that? What's The idea of this is, is if you haven't got a wall or not enough poles to stretch off, you can attach that to the, the tubes on your stretcher. And it actually sticks through the carpet. I have heard people say they work on a concrete floor. Just shows at, shows at the front of your dad. Yeah, so, so basically it pushes these teeth through, they go through your carpet and into the floor. Uh, I, I've heard people say they work on a concrete floor as, as well as a wood floor. And then the idea is you put the stretch on between this which then will release it even like throughout the rest of the, of the carpet. Personally, although I own this, I'm not one boring big holes in carpets. Um, I, I wouldn't like to put that through. I mean, even your woven carpet, if you 
break a couple of uh, chain warps or something. Yeah, I don't think you're doing it the best of good. If you're fitting a white carpet on a wood floor and you've gone and you've put your pad felt under it and you've got your paper backed under there and then you've just drilled 20 holes through it in the middle. Well, it's pointless to in six months, rest, yeah. you're going to have some, some black marks yeah. with your, your stretcher. We've got another thing here. The birth laugh. We've got this bear claw. Apparently this is an American thing. Um, now I must admit, we've just had a play with this. I've had a look at it. I've even been on the internet because I thought my brain was failing me. So the, the idea with that is the those, those claws go behind the gripper. These claws go behind the gripper. Uh, the, the, the problem I'm having with it is, is the head's floating so high up. It must be slightly bent or something, but the idea basically is behind the gripper, head into the carpet, and you're, you're levering off, off your gripper. So again, if you've got no pole access, you've got nothing to rest against, uh, this gives you a different option. I've got a more sensible version of the same thing here. The Robert's tubeless stretcher. It's tubeless or stretcher, what well, they call it, the crab. Um, so I have one of those to be fair. You've got a crab? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, th this will come with two heads on it as well, which it actually squeezes together. If, you, if you're trying to match a pattern carpet and, you, and there's, there's bits that don't match, you can actually use this with both heads on to, to squeeze the pattern in. So it, it's ideal for that. So it's multi-use really. You can yeah. use it for stretching this, and you this, can use it for like pulling joints yeah. and bores and screws and yeah. things like that. This is very old, um, although it looks like brand new. You can tell I use it all the time. Uh, so it goes behind the gripper. Uh, you do hear that it pulls up the gripper. I, I have had a, a, a good stretch with this and the gripper's perfectly all right. I must say we've got it into a hardwood floor here, so um, it's, it's got good anchorage, but it does work quite well, this. Um, again, it's just something else you can, you can have on the van, but uh, it, does, it does pull the carpet, the same amount of these, these tubed ones. The, the only thing you're relying on is your gripper anchorage. Yeah, just, that, that's the only downside for me with one of those. Uh, if it's a wooden subfloor, it's, it, it seems to be okay. But yeah. It pulls yeah. okay, but uh, sometimes on concrete subfloors, it pulls the gripper up. Yeah, I'd say if you're using it with architectural, it always used to be that if your power steps architectural, I think the stuff's a bit difficult to get hold of. Uh, and now we double up the gripper, stagger the uh, fixings, but. It, it hasn't pulled the gripper up at all on this, but where, when you're dealing with a concrete floor, if you, even if you've glued it, you just stick into the, the, the top of a dusty floor, even if you've primed it. So it does really rely on the anchorage of your gripper. Um, do, you, do you use it? Is it a tool you use often? I don't use it a lot. I have used it. Um, if you, if you, I mean, you could go get into somewhere that you couldn't get into and it would give you a little tweak, not necessarily using it as a full power stretcher. It, it does actually work with the power stretcher as well. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what? Well, it will go over the top of a power stretcher, I'd, I'd have thought. Yeah, and if, you, if you're stretching and, and, and instead of, like, I don't have a swivel head, yeah. so if I use it with that, instead of having a swivel head, I can use, I can use yeah, that, because that you, does swivel. You, yeah, yeah, it, that, that it does give the, yeah. the motion of a, of a swivel head, that, like this has got. But, um, I mean, it, it, it is quite hard to explain with things like this. Until you're on a job, you don't know where you where you're going to use it. Yeah. And then you find a way to place it, and it and it works. But the same with all these power stretches. They're an extra tool. I mean, if you are fitting to British standards, everything over the certain British standards. I do know what it is, but I'm not giving the game away because it's it's our trade. It took us a long while to learn and. Uh, I, I don't believe in giving it away on the internet. That's why we do miss a few technical points. You might get the odd nugget out of it. We're not really here to teach you to fit a carpet. We'll show you the tools, uh, and, and you really need to have an understanding yourself. Um, if you think you're coming as a DIYer to learn to fit a carpet off these videos, you're probably not going to get very far. <laughs> but but uh, as, a, as a proper fitter, you, you get the general gist of it. Finally, Dan, we've got the uh, palm stretcher. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, we've got a palm like stretcher. Gold dust, and stretcher. Them, they don't make them anymore. No, so. hard to get hold of. Um, th these things are ideal if, you, if you've got a short width of carpet on the, the sides of some stairs. You can actually 
you can put it through the carpet and leave it off the gripper. It will give you a minimal amount of uh, pull. So if you've got the side of some stairs or, or some tight patches up a little alcove, you can't get any tools in, you, you can use one of these. It's, it's probably a bit better than using an awl because you've got all these spikes, so it's taking the pressure off. If you're doing the same job with a, a brad awl, you just need to be a bit careful, you're not pulling a, a hole in the carpet. But um, I've been after one of those for years, just can't get all. Some, some did give me a link to, I think it was somewhere in Germany, it was an ice pick. Yeah. But the, uh, the, the pins were too fat, so I sent them away to get ground down, and then they were too weak, so they ended up just snapping. Yeah. I, I've looked for them myself and can't find one, and, I, and I've seen the ice picks, and I've spoke to a few people who've got them, they're, they're not that strong anyway. Um, but this, this is the thing that probably gets most attention out of all of this. We've had more questions on this just off a photograph, so uh, I'd, I'd say that's a useful tool. Um, Especially on winders, when you, for people who grip it on the side yeah, of winders. Yeah, you can pull some the, tension on the sides. Yeah. But you can use a normal awl, that yeah, does it, the job. Yeah, yeah, it's normal, just the right, fact yeah. that I can't get one and I want one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's so, the can't get that makes you want yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want it even more. Yeah, yeah. But, but, all in all, Dan, I think, I think they're all pretty good. Yeah. Uh, There's not much difference between all of these. They're, they're pulling your, your carpet. As I said, if you fit into pretty standards over the um, certain sizes, you, your warranty expects you to be using uh, one of these. Uh, and with a lot of the softer underlays we're using nowadays, the mechanical action on the back does cause them to go slack. Uh, so if, if you can get a good amount of stretch on them to start with, you're resisting that 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 bit of a, a restretch you might get, um, and, and there's people out there who say, "Well, I've never had a problem." Well, it doesn't matter if you had a problem or not. They're available. They, they're good for getting you out of trouble. They are be expected to use on British standards. Uh, and if you haven't had a problem and you've never needed one, you don't need to worry about them, really, do you? Yeah. Well, man, like I said, man's got me out of uh, trouble so yeah. many times. Yeah. You, you use it all the time. I, I, I do, all the time. I, Nearly every day. I use mine when um, regulation dictates I've got to use it. So um, The millikers I've got uh, trouble with one of my hips, and that's where, well, 30 years of using a knee kicker. Yeah. So I use my power stretcher quite a bit now. But um, I don't, I'm not I'm not so sure on the spike and the burr claw. I'd, I'd be interested to see, um, say, Ruben flows by Southern Boys or yeah. Billy Graham. See what I our American Ruben's friends one of these do, do they the, use them? What what are, what are their views on them? Uh, and someone can tell us whether that's meant to be further down because it's, it's definitely not meant to be there. So we'll need Ruben to decode the American style for us. So Ruben, <laughs> if you can shed a bit of light, mate. But uh, another thing I'd like to go with one day is that Triforce stretcher. Yeah, the Triforce yeah, stretcher, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. looks interesting. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think we've covered as much as we can with these. Yeah. They're all as good as each other. Uh, swivel head, you can put your uh, degrees of stretch on the width by using the swivel head and angle on your, on your pole. Um, you, you can really do the same with this anyway. So I, I would say even if you're buying a new one, that's the best priced one, comes with aluminium tubes. Um, your crane one, like I say with all the crane, is deluxe stuff, it's, it's engineered to last. Uh, some cases I'd say over engineered, that does the job. Some people like driving escorts, some people like driving Jags. Um, personal but, preference. Yeah, personal preference. Uh, but yeah, all in all, good, good, good tool with you. Like I said, I'm not so sure on the American stuff, but maybe we're, perhaps we're using it wrong. But. But yeah, cheers Dan, same time next yeah. week. Yeah, same time again, yeah. We've got Brilliant. them going on again now. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> cheers. cheers.